everybody doing? This is Frozy with Two Beards and a Board Game. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to play Big Monster in two-player mode. This is a two to six-player game uh, made by Explore 8, ages 10 plus. It takes about 25 minutes to play. Uh, and we do have a separate video up for uh, three plus players uh, for team mode and free-for-all. We decided to do a second video specifically for two-player mode because it is quite a bit different as far as the mechanics of, of how you draw tiles and things of that nature goes. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that in this video. If you do want to see how to play a three or more player game, uh, we'll go ahead and put the link to that video in the description as well. Now when you first open up your game, you're going to have a lot of punching out to do. There will be the, uh, the game tiles used to play the game. Uh, there will be some circular tokens, as well as some more double-sided tiles. Uh, I have the Kickstarter version of this game, and so um, it includes the Kickstarter stuff. And to tell that it's a Kickstarter uh, tile piece, there will be a little snail here in the corner of the player cards, as well as any of the uh, monster tiles things of that nature. We'll all have this little snail in the corner. One thing to note is when you are playing with Kickstarter pieces, for every Kickstarter piece you put in the game, you do need to take out uh, a, a tile, a regular tile for the game, uh, because it is, um, there's a set number of tiles that you use during the game, so you can't just add extras to it. And you got your character tiles here. You got your circular board. Board has two sides. Um, your team side has the two player icon here. And then you have your individual, if you're doing a free for all match, or if you're doing two players, you're going to use this side as well. Uh, you're going to have a nice pad of paper. These are double sided. This is to keep score at the end of the game. And of course you have your rule book as well. I'll explain all the rules. You may notice that the uh, beginning of this rule book is going to be in French. This is a French game. Uh, but if you get to about the middle, again, if you have the Kickstarter version of the game, it's gonna give you all of the different Kickstarter uh, tiles. One thing I really like about the rule book is, is at the back, it specifically tells you what each character does, as well as what each trophy does. And it gives a good explanation of what each monster does as well. We'll go over all this separately. Okay, for initial setup, you're going to want to take all of your double-sided tiles here. All of your white double-sided ones. And you're going to want to set those aside. You're going to want to get your board. Uh, and this is a double-sided board. One side has a one-player icon. I call it a one-player icon. And a two-player icon on it. You're going to want to make sure that you set up to the one player icon side. You're going to find your one player medals here. And there are a variety of medals, different types of medals you can choose from. Uh, these two medals, I believe these three medals here, are always the same. You just want to make sure that you have the ones that have the one player icon on them. Uh, medals are essentially bonus points for achieving goals while you're playing the game. As far as these metals over here, there are different ones you can choose from. You can choose deliberately or randomly, however you want to, to pick them out for that game. Uh, it does add a little bit of variety to the game. Uh, however, again, you want to just make sure you have the one-player icon when you're playing with a two-player game here. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to want to go through your stack of tiles. Anything that has a 5-plus icon on it, you're going to want to take these out of the game completely. You know, take these out of the game. You're not going to be using those at all. So make sure anything that has one of these five player icons on it, the bottom right of the back side of these tiles, you're going to take those out of the game again. You're not going to be using those. Okay, this part of uh, setup for a two player game is a little bit, a little bit tedious. But once you've discarded, there's 40. So make sure you count them because you're going to be using all of the other tiles. There's 40 of the tiles that have the plus five on them. You're going to discard all 40 of those. The rest of the tiles, you should have 80 tiles now. You're going to want to shuffle those in whatever way you deem to be the best. 
and you're gonna make 20 stacks of four, okay? Again, when I first, when we first did this in a two-player mode, I thought that was insane. It will make sense, but you're, you're gonna make 20 stacks of four tiles high each, okay? So you're gonna have to kind of like just find a place to put them all. We just kind of like put them around wherever. Uh, I'm not gonna place all 20 out for the example game here, but. Okay, and here's the main difference when it comes to a two-player game. Uh, during a two-player game, you're gonna lay your tiles. All of the laying tile rules are the same. All of the different tile types are the same. I'll go ahead and put what the different tile types um, are in from our, our three-player plus video. I'll put that in here as well so that you have access to that information without having to watch that entire other video. But the main difference here is the way that you draw tiles. You're not going to be drafting uh, your tiles. <clears throat> Whoever, the, the rule book tells you that the last person to go to the moon is placed first. Uh, so if you happen to have an astronaut you're in your gamer group, then they're going to go first every time when you guys play this game. But other than that, you can just choose randomly whatever way you deem uh, the most successful. And the way this works is... <clears throat> The first player to go is going to pick one of the stacks of 20. Okay, it doesn't have to go in any particular order. They're just going to pick any one of the stacks of, of 20, of four tiles. They're going to take it. They're going to flip them over. Okay. Uh, we'll move this stuff out of the way a little bit. Get them all into the field of vision here. Okay, so there's our four tiles. First player to go is going to choose a tile. Let's say we want this one. I'm going to choose that tile. And I'm going to discard this tile. So now I have a discard pile. Next player is going to go. They are going to choose a tile. They'll choose this one. And they'll discard this one. Okay. That's how the first and the last round of tile picking with two players goes. Every other round, so once that's done, you're gonna place your tiles following all the normal tile rules. Again, I'll put that um, information in this video as well so that you have that available to you. But once that's done and you've laid your tiles down, you go to the next round of tile picking. Now on the second round, the person that goes second is going to pick two stacks of tiles. Flip them over. So we got one stack of tiles, and then we'll take this stack of tile over here, and we'll flip them over. We got one, two, three in there. Okay. And so now what's going to happen is you're going to choose one tile from one of these sets. So if you choose this tile, then you can discard a tile from that same set. So you could discard this tile. However, you could not choose a tile from this set and then discard a tile from this set. It's very important. You have to choose the tile and discard the tile from the same set. So let's say we discard this one. Now the next player is going to go. Now they can choose maybe this one and then discard this one. Or if they want, they can choose from this set. They have more options here. They could choose this one, and maybe they discard this one. Okay, so now there's two left. Now, it's back to the player that chose first. They're going to choose a tile and discard a tile. And that'll go until there are no tiles left. The most important thing to know here is that you have two distinct sets of four tiles each. Those are separate sets of tiles. Okay, the, the rule book is slightly confusing about this. Those are two different sets of tiles, which means you cannot draw from one set and discard from the other. You draw and discard from the same set. So tiles leave those sets always in, in pairs. One drawn, one discarded, okay? You're going to repeat that process until you run out 
of tiles. And when you get to the very last round of the game, of, of the tile picking, you're going to be down to one again. Just like in the very first round of the game. You'll have just one set of tiles to pick from. And you'll do the same thing. You'll pick a tile. You'll put a tile back. This player will pick a tile. Put a tile back. Okay. Then it... In between each round of picking tiles and discarding tiles, you're going to place your tiles uh, on your board following all of the same rules as a multiplayer game. You can place it anywhere you want on your character board as long as the, the monster on the character board is facing upright. It can be adjacent to any other type of tile. Uh, but it can't go, you know, if it's not a sideways monster, there are a couple of sideways ones. It can't go like this. It can't go upside down. But it can go on the top or the bottom, uh, you know, up here. I've got a little limited limited play space here, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it to the side. And so what you're going to want to do before you start playing your first game is, and I'll say, say that this was a little overwhelming in the beginning, is... Uh, learning what all the different monsters do. The rule book does at the back do a very good job of explaining what each of the monsters does. Um, the mutagen monsters, I'll go over them really quickly. The mutagen monsters are white monsters here. Okay, so that's a mutagen monster. And it is it is worth three points by itself. And then you see at the bottom here, it can go to eight and then 18. So the way that works is if you have your mutagen monster placed down and you pick up a mutagen tile like this and you were to, I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way here really quick so that I can show it to you. All right, so you got your mutagen monster here. Let's say you played that your first turn, you pick this one up for your second turn. You can play this mutagen monster here and you have to have the, the mutagen rays aiming at that mutagen monster. If that happens, then you go and you look at these, these here. And we got a slug. So you find the slug, and you can tell because it goes to eight points. And none of them have the same point values on them, so it's easy, easy to figure out which one's which. <clears throat> so this one's worth eight points now, and it can set on top. So now that's worth eight points at the end of the game. Now it can, because it can still go to 18, it can be transformed again. If you draw another mutagen card later, you can play it at the top here and transform it, and then you would flip this over, and it'll be worth 18 points at the other game. Some of the monsters, like this, some of these have double mutagens on them. Some of the monsters... Uh, mutagen monsters can only transform once. Some of them can transform twice. And it, can, it works either way. So, for example, with this monster, let's say your first tile you, you got was this, and you played it down like this here. And then on the next turn, you grabbed one of the slug tiles. Well, you're going to play your slug tile there. And since it already has the mutagen rays pointing at it, it's going to go ahead and transform into the slug right away. Okay, so that's mutagen monsters. That's how those monsters work. Next up is big monsters. Big monsters come in two parts. There's two halves to a big monster. The head and the tail, we'll call it. Or the face and the butt, whatever you want. Um, by itself, if at the end of the game, you only have half of a, a big monster, it's worth one point. And that's it. But you can, if you put them together make the entire big monster, and at the end of the game, this is worth a combined total of 11 points. And you can do that as many times as you want, as many times as you can, you can get both halves of the big monster. You can play them down and try to get as many pairs together to, to complete the big monster, to get 11 points per big monster at the end of the game. Next up is Swamp Monsters. Now, a Swamp Monster by itself is worth two points. If you end the game with a single Swamp Monster, you get two points. Okay, but the Swamp Monsters, you can see this on your, your player aid here. Uh, they multiply the more you have. So if you end up with two Swamp Monsters at the end of the game, 
then you're gonna end up with eight points because they're now gonna be worth four apiece. If you get three swamp monsters at the end of the game, you're gonna end up with 18 points because they're now worth six apiece. Now there's a total of five swamp monsters total in all of the tiles. So you can, if you were to get all of them, uh, get up to 50 points at the end of the game using swamp monsters. And that's all they do. It's just this, this specific monster, all the swamp tiles look exactly the same and they just multiply off of each other. Okay, we're gonna go over two types of monsters at the same time here. Uh, you'll notice on some of the character cards, they have little, little symbols here, half pieces of crystals. <clears throat> And those crystals uh, score points at the end of the game if you've completed them. Now, lava monsters are one of the main ways to get these, these crystals. Lava monsters, when you play them at the end of the game, they're going to be worth whatever the number it says on the lava monster is. But they also have the crystal points on them. So if you were to play this lava monster here, you would have created this half of the crystal. So at the end of the game, again, on your player aid, it would tell you, you're going to get two points for creating that crystal, and you can do that as many times as you can throughout the game to add those points up. Uh, there is also these circles. Those are top to bottom. They're a little bit harder to create, but those give you five points each. And then there's also the four-point crystals. They're worth ten points, and you've got to connect four things. Now, the reason I said that we're going to go over two types of monsters at the same time is because there's also the rune monsters. <clears throat> now, all the rune monsters do, they don't give you any points by themselves, but they do have crystal pieces on them, as you can see here and here. And uh, I'll talk about this a little bit more when I talk about the desert tiles as well, but the main point of rune monsters is... <clears throat> At the end of the game, whoever has the fewest desert tiles and rune tiles combined gets this medal. This medal is worth negative 10 points. So, these don't do a lot for you during the game, but they will help you avoid that medal at the end of the game. And again, even though they're not the same type of monster, they still can be combined like this to complete crystals. Right? So they don't have to be a, two lava monsters next to each other to complete a crystal. These guys can get next to each other and create crystals too. Same thing with the uh, blue crystals or the red crystals. The next type of monster we're going to go over is the grass monsters. Now the grass monsters all do something different. Uh, they don't give you any base points like maybe the uh, lava monsters or the big monster or the, the uh, ice monsters. But they give you multipliers. So this one gives you, at the end of the game, if, you, if you've if you played this monster down, you get one point for every lava monster tile you have down. This one gives you an extra two points for every completed green crystal you have. This one gives you three points for every desert tile you have. This one gives you one extra point for each one of the uh, crystals that you have on the board completed at the end of the game. I won't go over all of the different grass monsters because there's uh, about nine of them. However, again, at the back of the rule book, there is uh, a very detailed explanation of what each one of them does. So you're gonna wanna have that handy when you go to score at the end of the game. The monster we're gonna go over is the desert monster tile. Uh, this, this tile doesn't do anything for you. Uh, whatsoever by itself. Uh, it gives you no points. Um, there is a grass monster lets you multiply or gets you points for having them. Uh, the main purpose of this tile is very specifically to avoid getting the negative 10 uh, consequence at the end of the game for having the fewest uh, rune and desert tiles added up between all the players. And then also there is a desert metal uh, when you're playing in single player mode or two-player mode, it's the first person to three desert tiles gets this 10-point medal, and that adds 10 points at the end of the game. So, and at the end of the game, you're going to score just like you would do a regular multiplayer game. Okay, so scoring in this game is, is very, very simple. You're going to obviously want to have a uh, pen or a pencil with you. 
Uh, you can put your player names up here. And then you're going to just go through each player. Everybody's going to have their entire board laid out in front of them. And you're just going to go through and, and add up all the tiles. Uh, so in the first column, you're going to add up all your ice tile score. That means you're just going to add up the number of points you have on your board, the total number of points shown on all of your ice tiles. Then you're going to go to big monster tiles. Again, if you have both of them, they're worth 11. If you have one that doesn't have the other half, it's worth one. Then you go to the lava score tiles. And on this tile, again, you're just adding up the numbers that appear on all of your lava tiles. Then you're gonna to go to your grassland tiles. And those are the ones that have the, the multipliers. Those are the ones that, that are gonna give you, uh, this one gives you one for every lava tile you have. So that one's gonna, you may need to look at the, uh, the rule book to figure out which ones you have so that you can score that correctly. And you can go your, your swamp tiles. And again, it gives you a nice little aid here if you have one, two, three, four, or five. It tells you how many points you're going to have. Then you'll go ahead and add up all your crystals, any completed crystals that you have on your board. So if you have six green crystals, you'll have 12 points. Maybe you have one of these, uh, a red crystal, that will add five points. And then you, maybe you've completed a blue crystal, so you'll end up with um, 27 points in the crystal column. Then you'll add up your Explorer tile here. Uh, this is any bonuses that you may have received from your Explorer. Not all Explorers give a bonus points at the end of the game. This one gives you one bonus point for every Lava tile you have at the end of the game. Uh, this one doesn't give you any bonuses, but it does have a mutagen guy that will let you transform one of your ice monsters right away. Then you're going to add up your Metals. Any medals that you've received uh, for being the first player to uh, achieve the uh, goals set forth by the medals. And then you're also going to assign the negative 10 medal. And the way to do that is you're going to, everybody's going to add up their desert and their rune tiles together. Whoever has the least of those combined gets the negative 10 point medal. And then you have your total uh, for individual scores. You add your score up at the end of the game and whoever has the highest amount of points wins. And that is how to play a two-player game of Big Monster. Uh, we've played both ways, and both ways were enjoyable. Uh, I probably prefer a game with more people, uh, just for the different varieties and strategies that go along with that. However, a two-player game of this is, is very, very fun as well. There's lots of strategy that goes into it. Uh, overall, this is a, it's a very well-made game. Uh, the rule book uh, has very, very good information at the back of the rule book. It explains in detail what every tile does, how scoring works, what every player does. And so that was all done really, really well. Uh, if you want to see the more in-depth video of a 3-plus player game, it would probably help you understand the 2-player game a little bit better as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a link to that to, in the uh, description of the video, as well as our uh, review of the game. Uh, if you have any rules, questions, or comments, go ahead and leave those for us. We always love to hear those. We always answer as quickly as possible. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, and uh, check us out on social media. And uh, as always, we, we just appreciate you guys watching our videos. Thank you very much.